Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Tuesday, June 6, 2023 Planning Commission Work Session. Uh, first item, UP-23-12 downtown. This item will be deferred until July 18, 2023. Ms. Adamoff. Good afternoon. There are four cases on the agenda today. As you mentioned, the first one we deferred, but uh, the staff person will make a presentation. We will go in the order of the listed cases, UP 2312, then UP 2309, and so forth and so on. Ms. Mervine. Good afternoon, planning commissioners. Good afternoon. I am Amy Mervine, senior planner with the city of Portsmouth. Um, just a brief statement. Um, so staff recommends deferral of use permit application UP-23-12 to the July 18th Planning Commission public hearing to allow the Environmental Protection Agency, or the EPA, to provide feedback and additional information for this property due to its location with the, within the ABEX Superfund site. I also provided, this is just um, an approximate boundary line of the Apex Superfund site, and then that where the arrow is pointing is where the proposed use permit request application is for. Did you all have any questions about that? If not, I'll move, move forward. Commissioners, any questions for Ms. Mervine? Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Awesome. Mervine. Of course. And I will also do the next application. Um, so again, good afternoon, planning commissioners. <laughs> <laughs> I am Amy Mervine, city, senior planner with the city of Portsmouth. This use permit application request before you today is to operate an entertainment establishment on approximately 0 0.143 acres at 620 High Street. The property is located in the downtown urban center D1 T5 zoning subdistrict and the downtown design overlay district. The building was constructed in 1930 and is approximately 5,989 square feet. The property is occupied by a commercial structure that faces High Street. No off-street parking is required for properties zone D1, T4, T5, or T6 north of Interstate 264. Any future exterior alterations visible from the public right-of-way will require an approved certificate of appropriateness or COA by the Downtown Design Committee. The surrounding area consists of commercial type land uses. To the east and west of the subject property are commercial buildings zoned Downtown Urban Center D1 T5. To the north is a parking lot and landscaping followed by Queen Street. And to the south across High Street are commercial and mixed use type land uses zone D1 T5. The applicant operates the book club as a bookstore that also serves prepackaged foods, coffee, teas, and wine. The book club also offers other services, including but not limited to community engagement events, art and craft events, book signings and readings, the display of local artworks, and fundraising events. With this use permit application, the applicant proposes to expand their existing business to include entertainment such as karaoke, blues night, Neo Soul themed music events and other live entertainment from local artists. Zoning staff approved business license clearances in October of 2020 for retail and sales use, listing bookshop and refreshments, including prepackaged food, coffee and wine, and accessory uses. The business license zoning clearance states there will be no live entertainment, amplified music, or any other activity which requires a use permit. The building official issued a notice to comply for the property on March 10th, 2021, and nine days later, the applicant submitted preliminary plans to the building official for review. That's what the clarification letter includes is just additional information on um, from the notice to comply that was issued. Just FYI, I should have brought that up first. Um, in April of 2021, a pre-application conference was held with staff and the applicant to discuss the requirements of obtaining a use permit to operate an entertainment establishment. 
a follow-up pre-application meeting email was sent to the applicant summarizing the use permit process for establishing an entertainment establishment use. In April of 2021, a building permit was issued for a change of use, and in August of 2021, the building official issued a certificate of occupancy. A use permit for an entertainment establishment was not applied for at this time. Due to indications from the police chief that unauthorized entertainment was continuing on the property, the property, was, property owner was notified in March of 2023 for operating an establishment, entertainment establishment without a use permit and filed a use permit application for the entertainment establishment use in April of 2023. The property is designated on the future land use map of the comprehensive plan for mixed use downtown land uses. With input from several city departments, staff recommends denial of the applicant's use permit request. The applicant pursued the corrective building permit and certificate of occupancy, but did not file a use permit application until April of 2023 to operate an entertainment establishment. Although this use permit application would remedy existing violations, city, city staff recommends denial of the use permit request. Several public comments were received regarding this application and have been forwarded to the planning commissioners. I will now stand by for any questions. Thank you, Ms. Murphine. Commissioners, any questions? Oh, can you turn your mic on, please? Mm. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -mm. In front of you. <laughs> She's still in. You got it? <laughs> okay. Thank you all. Um, the only question I have is one of the conditions, if it were to be approved on the Planning Commission, was the soundproofing of the exit. And, and the front, mm -hmm. and to me, it should be soundproof the entire building. Is that a possibility? Um, I believe that's something that they could add as a, as a condition. Um, the one you're referring to, that's a use specific standard of the zoning ordinance to have the soundproof doors. Uh -huh. That in the back, mm -hmm. but not the sides. And I say that because mm -hmm. this building is sort of attached to the building. Yep, it's connected on both sides right. with so other commercial. Me, common sense says it that should be stipulated that it should be soundproofed all the way around the building inside the building mm -hmm. and that would help even more I would to absorb def I'll defer to um, our director and legal team just to make sure that that's a condition that we that you guys could potentially add <laughs> Thank you, uh, LaVonda Graham-Williams, City Attorney. Uh, my only concern would be that uh, further consultation with the applicant would be necessary. That is an, an, an additional requirement that would they need to be provided notice of. Um, it's okay. a uh, large output, and so I would ask that that occur before any such condition be provided. Thank you. Thank and you. I wanted to speak to the building official, too, to see the possibility of doing something like that, and if the code required it. Well, I think the code does not require it, right? The, the code building doesn't. code, the building code. They have certain requirements, too, for, for buildings, and I want to look, talk to them as well. Oh, okay, okay. Because I think you see where I'm going with this. Mm -hmm. If we have the, the soundproofing on the front inside and the back, then even more soundproofing all the way around that particular building. Yeah, I, I see you're just asking more than what the zoning ordinance says, yes. and then yes. um, our interim director's um, talking more about the building code. Okay, okay. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Thank you. Commissioner Hines. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, so I just want to make sure I'm, I'm I, I guess I have a couple of questions. The, one is the one of downtown, downtown design and appropriateness of covering of windows. Is that a prohibited act under downtown design? So in the DDC, it's a percentage. It's, I think it's, I'll defer to Julie, 20% of the window coverage. 
So the, the purpose of the DDC is to allow, like, you want that light to come in through the windows. So we don't want just all the windows covered or, like, blacked out, blackout windows. So, so in the case where they have actually, in instances, covered the windows, um, that is not only a violation of the things you've outlined in this document, but also of downtown design standards, too. Am I correct in saying so? Yep. They would need to see an approved COA to do that first. Okay. Um, s secondly, um, based on the uh, on the staff report, it appears that we have uh, zoning clearances in October 2020, um, and then viol uh, violations uh, started on March the 10th in terms of a notice to comply. Um, it also looks like on March the 19th that this this particular uh, business owner um, notified you guys that y'all wanted to keep uh, current zoning. Um, am I correct in saying so? and not ask for any sort of additional use permitting? Yeah, based off the communication in that email that was attached with the clarification letter that they didn't want to pursue the use permit for an entertainment establishment, they just wanted to move forward with the zoning clearance and then the building permits. And then the actual um, license to operate, it, it clearly specified that the use of amplified music, et cetera, et cetera, does, does indeed say that, correct? That there is, they're not, these are prohibited acts? Yep, the business yeah. zoning clearance does state that. All right. Also in this packet, for the, and I'm saying all this for the sake of, uh, of the general public here, because uh, they may not have access to all this. But it also appears that um, several uh, advertisements appeared in our packets um, on February 11, 2023, uh, 1029, 1022, karaoke taking a place at this establishment each Thursday night and also on July 9th, 2022. Is that a mischaracterization of what's in my pocket? So those were submitted from the police chief and that the, those were included with his comments. But that is in the packet, correct? Mm -hmm. That's correct. These are all we highlighted in detailed violations of the ability uh, in, in terms of their business license and approved, correct? Am I understanding that? Yes, because okay. karaoke is specifically listed within the definition of an entertainment establishment. And we have, again, the business owner saying that they're not wanting to do these acts and then continuing to do these acts and through the better part of two years. Correct. Just want to make sure I was clear on that. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Hines. Commissioners, any additional questions? Not at this time. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Mervine. Thank you. Ms. Julie Chubb will come to the next case. Good afternoon, Commissioners. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. This is, I'm Julie Chomp, Principal Planner with the City of Portsmouth. This rezoning application is a request to rezone the 5.38 acre property at Zero Effingham from downtown D1 T5 to conditional general mixed use or GMU. This application is being considered concurrently with a use permit application to build a three-story 103,350 square foot 793 unit self-service storage facility. This presentation will focus on both of these applications. Consideration of the use permit request is contingent upon approval of the rezoning application. The property at Zero Effingham is currently vacant and was formerly the site of the Washington Park housing development. The property is in the AE8 flood zone and is encumbered with several utility easements. The surrounding area is a mix of industrial, commercial, and residential uses. A large parking area for semi-trailers zoned D1SD is located to the east of Zero Effingham Street. To the north of the subject property is vacant land and the stormwater facility for the trailer parking that is zoned D1T5 and D1SD. To the south of the property is Portsmouth Fire Station Number 1, which is zoned downtown T4, 
Further south are retail shops that are zoned GMUK or conditional general mixed use. A retail store with gasoline sales and residential dwellings are located to the west of the property across Effingham Street. From 1928 to 1978, the Abex Corporation operated a brass and bronze foundry nearby to the Washington Park housing development at Zero Effingham Street. Lead contaminated soil leached from the adjacent Abex operations was found at the housing development, as well as a number of surrounding properties. In 1990, the Environmental Protection Agency, or the EPA, added the site to the national priorities list as the Apex Corporation Superfund site. As part of the contamination remediation, the Washington Park Residential Complex was demolished in 2006. Following extensive cleanup efforts, the remediation was declared complete by the EPA in 2009. The map on this slide shows the approximate boundaries of the ABEX Corporation Superfund site. In April of 2020, Safe Store contacted the EPA regarding their plans for this property. EPA responded with a letter that can be found in the staff report packet. The letter indicated that the proposed use was compatible for the property and the development of the Zero Effingham Street property is also required to be developed in compliance with the prescribed EPA regulations for this Superfund site, as well as City Code Section 11, Article 2, excavation requirements for ABEX Superfund sites. Substantially similar rezoning and use permit applications to those before you today were previously submitted on two different occasions. In 2021, Planning Commission recommended approval of rezoning application Z20-10 and use permit application UP20-11 with conditions by a vote of six to zero. The applications were then deferred by City Council to allow the EPA to respond to City Council questions. In March of 2021, the EPA representatives presented at the virtual City Council work, public work session and re reported that the site had been remediated and was appropriate for redevelopment. City Council then denied rezoning application Z-20-10 in April of 2021 by a vote of four to three. In June of 2022, Planning Commission recommended approval of rezoning application Z-22 02 with proffered conditions and use permit application UP-22-09 with conditions by a vote of 7 to 0. On July 12, 2022, City Council voted to deny rezoning application by a vote of 4 to 3, which rendered the use permit application null and void. This use permit application is substantially similar to the two previous use permit requests. The proposed multi-level self-service storage facility will include 793 units, two elevators, and will not contain a residence. The office is estimated to operate from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., and the facility will provide access to the units 24 hours a day via a security access system. The proposed self-service storage facility will employ approximately six to eight people. The conceptual site plan shown here shows two access points to the site, one off of Effingham Street and another at the southeast corner of the parcel from Green and Brighton Street. Loading areas are displayed on the east and south of the building. 21 parking spaces are planned along the eastern and southern building facades. The applicant plans to remove the existing chain link fence, replace it with a six foot solid fence, and install a landscape buffer. In order to meet flood zone requirements, that facility will be elevated to the required level above the floodplain. The applicant submitted a proffer letter as part of this rezoning application that includes a list of prohibited land uses that would typically be permitted in the GMU zoning district that are either inappropriate for the property or restricted by the EPA covenants. The proposed proffers ensure that potential high-risk activities are not conducted on the site while protecting adjacent areas from inappropriate land uses. 
The voluntary proffers also mandate that the applicant remove the existing chain link fence and install landscaping along the entire length of the property along Effingham Street. These proffers are the same as the previous conditional rezoning request. The initial rezoning was a stand re standard rezoning that did not include proffered conditions. This elevation shows the west facade facing Effingham Street and the south facade facing the fire station. The elevations shown here face the trailer parking lot to the east and the north elevation faces the vacant lot and the interstate on-ramp. The proposed GMUK zoning eliminates the urban downtown requirements of the current designation and allows for a more typical suburban related form of development. A rezoning of this property to accommodate the proposed use is suitable as the Superfund designation limits the development potential of the site. The proposed rezoning with the proffers and the proposed use permit with the conditions for a self-service storage facility would provide for the use of vacant property with restricted development potential in a manner that is appropriate for the property and compatible with the surrounding area. Staff recommends approval of both the proposed GMUK conditional zoning and the proposed self-service storage facility use with the recommended conditions. To my knowledge, no public comments have been received regarding this application. And I will now stand by for any questions from the commissioners. Thank you, Ms. Chop. Commissioners, any questions for Ms. Chop? Commissioner Hines. Thank you, Madam Chair. I uh, just want to again make sure for a uh, great presentation and, and thank you for answering my questions earlier in the week. Um, the question that I have is you, you detailed out a number of uses that are being proffered away from this particular site. Should, should we do the rezoning? Um, they called them, I think you said they were uh, high, you know, highly potential or potentially dangerous to this site or whatever the case may be. Um, is that based on their um, interpretation of the Superfund site or is that based on ruling from the EPA? Um, I would recommend asking the applicant, but I believe they they looked at the the uses that are permitted within the GMU district and then evaluated on their own accord which ones were appropriate and which ones weren't and then like prohibited through the proffers the ones that they felt were not appropriate or the residential uses that are are not permitted on the property okay and then it, it, the things that limit this spot are not only are just the epa pieces but a various number of easements too correct that are kind of splitting this site slightly thus you know hampering the ability to develop it in certain ways correct correct uh, okay um and then i i, I guess the uh, the the last question is um it's currently zone T5, right? As it sits, so various T5 uses could actually be used still, even with the the EPA. You still have to go through and get the the project approved, but um, we would have no such hearing in that. If, am I understanding that correct? If somebody wanted to develop it with another T5 approved item, it would have be developed by right, provided that it has EPA clearance. Am I understanding that as well? Correct. So there's a number of other uses that may not be seen as community friendly, but that would actually be seen, be able to be developed by right if they can get EPA clearance. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Tickets, did you yes. have a question? Um, not a question, but a comment, because as I went through the package, during the time when city council was zooming at that time we had epa representatives on the call as i recall from reading and what struck me the most is that epa stated that the site was cleaned and was now ready for development am i correct yes ma'am thank you so much commissioners any additional questions miss chop i have a question um it's my understanding that the EPA <clears throat> is required to conduct a review 
of the site cleanup every five years, which includes taking samples, talking with neighbors, inspecting, um, and they're supposed to notify the community and other interested parties every five years. When will this be completed or has it already been completed? Yes, they, I believe the last one was conducted in 2022. So the next one will be in um, 2027. Is one more question, if you would please. Is there any other long-term maintenance that you know of? Not that I'm aware of. Any excavation on any of the Superfund sites must be in compliance with the um, city code section regarding excavation of ABEX Superfund sites. Okay, thank you. Commissioners, anything else? Okay, thank you, Ms. Chop. Ms. Uh, Atmoa, do you have anything else right this minute? If you don't, I have a couple of things I would like to mention, please. I had a few points to share okay. with you, but this is, if you have, if it's something in reference to the, to the projects, you know, no. complete that. Okay. No, it's a different subject. All right. I want to say that, um, at the May 6th meeting, um, the uh, chairman of the BOZA came before um, city council and he raised concerns about the number of variances that they had. And he wants possibly a change in the code amendment or a change in the way we do things because he felt like there were too many, uh, it was too much of a burden on citizens. The BOZA had six applications that month um, so he thought that you know, we should look at that. So that's something that we should be looking at in the future. Um, there are no, no new applications for the month of July. Of course, the annual report is attached to your staff, to your report, and that's done by Ms. Amy Mervine. Mervine. Um, let's see. We did remove a use permit condition on uh, townhouses. Uh, we were in, we, the legal department suggested that it would, that, that, that condition that reference to uh, surveillance should be, could, could be placed on um, apartment complexes and not townhouses, because apartment townhouses were comparable to single family. So we did remove that from a use permit that went to council. So we weren't trying to usurp your authority or anything. It's just that legal advice and they explained it to us made sense. So we removed the particular condition. And of course, we had two staff changes. Uh, Ms. Pittenger is no longer with the city, nor is Ch uh, Carl Jackson. Uh, Ms. Chop is filling in for Ms. Pittenger, and Brian Sweats is filling in for uh, Mr. Ja Mr. Jackson. So those are some of the things I want to share with you. Okay, thank you. Those were the two items that I was actually. <laughs> So, okay. Um, commissioners, if there's no other, Mr. Commissioner Hines. Thank you. Thank you. I just wanted to ask that uh, a similar question of, of legal, and I think Mr. Hugel may have asked this, but I guess maybe I just need to make sure I'm clear. So, and in that packet of zoning ordinances that we passed to council and council ultimately signed off on, there was rather stringent language about cameras and camera systems for uh, multifamily um, in, in, in naturally townhouses being as close together as they are. I just had wanted to make sure I had, you know, we were on those zoning ordinances, we were on legal clear footing for having it in one spot, but yet in a kind of a different spot, it was ruled as unconstitutional. So um, if maybe I can get just a little clarity there, I think that would be helpful. Sure, thank you for your question. Again, LaVon de Graham Williams, city attorney. I think it, the courts have fallen on the single family home distinction. Um, and because townhomes are more comparable to a single family home, the courts are more restrictive on the use of surveillance type tools in that type of sanctu sanctuary. Um, with multi-family use, uh, the courts have been more lenient and have um, allowed cities, as so long as there is a connection to the use and impact on the community, to allow us to find those types of um, surveillance mechanisms for safety reasons they have upheld. 
And so the distinction really is in the nature of the housing. May I ask a follow-up? Sure. So just as a question of making sure that our conditions that we're asking applicants to perform uh, pass a legal standard, um, is this one of those deals where uh, we pass a condition and then you review it for legal sufficiency, or are these uh, standards or conditions looked at prior to? Because in that condition, in that situation, we passed a condition that less than 24 hours later was determined unconstitutional. So the question is: Is anybody reviewing our conditions to ensure that we are? on the right legal footing? A absolutely. Uh, we are reviewing them um, beforehand and then re-reviewing them afterhand. Uh, the nature of the law changes every day. And uh, I just happen to be very versed in First Amendment and uh, equal protection clauses from my prior experience and noticed that that had been overlooked. And so in a discussion with my team, we valid, we valid that around and decided that it was, um, after research, um, a point that we needed to correct. But they're being reviewed both before and after. Thank you very much. Thank you. Commissioners, are there any additional questions? No? Um, J Commissioner Jiggets? <laughs> no question, but just to follow up on what the, um, the city attorney has <laughs> said, um, I think a number of us had to come to grips with how this is going to work and obviously there are times where it's going to be very fluid so obviously based on what you've said to us and I find comfort in knowing that going forward um, there will be a way to keep the Planning Commission in the loop if things we put forth as a condition is illegal and we can't do it then you'll save us from ourselves so I appreciate that thank you so much both of you thank you Ms. Adamwa, is there anything else? Yes, I'd like to recognize City Manager T Terry. She's a very busy person, so I'm thankful that she did uh, attend the meeting today, but uh, I have no other comments. Welcome. <laughs> okay, if there is nothing else, uh, commissioners, this concludes our work session, and we will reconvene at 1.30. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to welcome you all to this very important meeting today, Tuesday, June 6, 2023, in the City of Portsmouth City Council Chambers. As a reference for our guests today, UP-23-12 uh, is being deferred until July 18, 2023 and that will change the order of our agenda that was made available to you. Madam Secretary. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Commissioners, we will now have roll call. Please indicate your presence electronically. Green. Six members of the Planning Commission are present. Commissioners, before you are the minutes of the May 2nd, 2023 public hearing. If there aren't any changes, excuse me, <clears throat> we are in need of a motion. Um, Madam Chair, I do have some things that I need to question about the minutes. Commissioner Jiggets. That I need. Could you speak into the <laughs> microphone when you get on? That I need on? to question about the minutes. Can you hear me now? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, in the minutes, it had indicated that, and this is from, from last month, May, had indicated that the project on the market for Suffolk, I don't think that's correct. It was the applicant uh, under the UP 23-08, and obviously it's our project in Portsmouth. So I don't think that was an accurate uh, reference. So I would ask that that be checked to make sure for clarity's sake. Um, I 
that was the that was the main thing. Okay. So I I, I, want, I don't want to say correction because we need to check it to see if that's what the applicant actually stated. Okay. Uh, if we if y'all would if it's okay, we can go ahead and approve the minutes with the verification that that statement is correct. Would that yes suffice, that would suffice. everybody? Yes. Okay. Okay. Commissioners, we need a motion to I approve so the minutes. To yeah. approve the minutes. With verification. With verification about that statement. I second that. Thank you, Commissioners. Madam Secretary. Thank you, Madam Chairman. We have a motion then to second to approve the minutes from the May the second public hearing, and you will be voting electronically. The minutes the minutes are approved by a vote of 60 0. Announcements of future meetings and conferences. Due to the 4th of July holiday, please note that our next scheduled work session is Tuesday, July the 18th, 2023, at 12 30 p.m., City Council Chamber, followed by public hearing at 1 30 p.m., City Council Chamber. Items reviewed today will be presented to City Council for action at their July the 11th public hearing or as otherwise noted. Planning Commission rules limit a speaker up to five minutes to speak. We also ask that everyone please silence your cell phones at this time if you have not already done so. Thank you. Our first item, UP-23-09 downtown. The Book Club LLC requests a use permit to operate an entertainment establishment on the approximately 0 0.143 acres located at 620 High Street in the Downtown Urban Center D1 T5 Zoning District. The future land use map of the Build One Portsmouth Comprehensive Plan designates this property for mixed use downtown. The property is owned by Two Monkeys, Inc. and is further described as Tax Map 18, Parcel 130. The staff coordinator is Amy Mervine. Will the applicant or the representative for this application please come forward and present your application Ms. at this Ms. time? Ms. Jackson, yes. excuse me. Are they going to vote to defer this case for until the next uh, July 18th meeting? For the UP 2312? Yes. We were going to do that I at the end. I was going by the, the order of uh, my agenda. We were going to do that okay. at the end. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> mm -hmm. The applicant, can the applicant for UP-23-09 please come forward and present your application at this time? How are y'all doing today? Good okay. Fine. How are you? That's fine. All right. All right. <laughs> so it's time for us to talk. Okay, I'm sorry. Yes, sir. Okay. So we're a simple mom and pop um, store. Started off as coffee shop, just bookstore. Um, evolved to carry wine and beer, um, and then, you know. We started having like live events like jazz and stuff like that. Sir, um, excuse me, I apologize. Could you uh, give us your name, please? Oh, okay. My, my name is S.T. McElroy. My first name is S.T. Last name McElroy II. This is my wife, April McElroy. Thank you. You can continue. Thank oh, you very okay. much. Okay. Uh, we saw. Um, that Portsmouth was lacking. We own a home in uh, Old Churchland. Um, and we just saw that Portsmouth was lacking for something for you know grown people to actually go and enjoy themselves. Um, so we've had uh, church groups, um, church karaoke groups actually before we got noticed that we couldn't have karaoke. Okay. Um, we've had, um, we actually had okay. the, uh, what is it? Parole board, the state parole board come through and answer questions for loved ones, for people that have been locked up um, 15, 20 years, haven't been able to get their questions answered. Um, we had 
the place was packed, um, and, but they were able to get their questions answered. Um, so we do like a lot of outreach. We do chess tournaments, all kind of stuff like that. If you haven't been to the book club, feel free to come by and check it out. Um, everybody that comes just gets a sense of uh, unity and peace when they walk into the building. And I mean, that's what we were going for when we, when we developed the, uh, the building. I don't know if you guys actually seen pictures inside. I see plenty of pictures outside, but yeah, it's just, it's just a laid back environment, something for you know, anybody just to come in and you know, relax. Uh, the, the application that we put in was for us to actually be able to have, um, we were instructed that we couldn't have karaoke, that it was against the rules, so we immediately shut that down, and we were told that we couldn't have line dancing classes either. So we said, okay, so we submitted the application to be able to get the live use permit. Um, um, and that covers a DJ, you need a DJ for karaoke. Um, that covers the line dancing. Um, we had the stereo hooked up, not a DJ, but you know, she kind of ran the music for the line dance to stop and start to teach the people the different steps. Um, but we're, it's nothing boisterous or anything like that. It's just, it's just I mean, anybody can come. It's, it's just a great time. Something for um, most people come. Uh, when we were having karaoke, people would come in and they'd say, I'm bringing my mom next week. And so it was, it's that type of crowd, you know, it's, it's just a really good vibe, really nice vibe. And that's what we, that's what we want to keep going. I've even reached out to the Civic League and uh, asked them, we didn't get a response from the email. We showed up to one meeting, but they didn't have us on the agenda. Um, our representative is Michael Massey. He had a family emergency up in Baltimore. So he, so normally I wouldn't be doing all this talking, I imagine. Um, but, uh, we just, like, we just want to bring something different to Portsmouth. If nobody on the commission has been in the book club to see what's going on, it's kind of hard to describe. <laughs> it's a hodgepodge of a lot of different things. Um, we definitely have books on the shelves for people to read. Um, we're looking at starting an actual book club. Um, like I said, we have the chess uh, going on in there. We have a grand piano on the stage. Um, for people to use and stuff. We have uh, open mics and all that stuff. So we just, we just want it to be kind of like a community meeting place. You know, that's it. Thank you, sir. Commissioners, any questions for the applicant? Yes. Wait. Commissioner Hines. I'll defer to allow it. Okay. okay. Commissioner Chiggetts. <laughs> Thank you. Um, what comes to mind is, according to the requirement of uh, the use permit, if it was approved, you would need to have soundproofing on the front and the back mm -hmm. of the facility. Are you aware of that? No. Soundproofing. No, we weren't aware of that. We, we, we were made aware that we had to rebuild the stage um, for some fireproofing, and, and we did that. Um, but as far as uh, soundproofing, we weren't made aware of that, no. Okay. Um, if, it, if the Planning Commission approves it, you would need the soundproofing on the front, on the front entrance as well as the exit rear. But uh, personally, I would hope that you all would be willing to soundproof the inside, entire inside of the facility, because I think if it's soundproof, obviously, it's not required for it to be the entire circumference, but I believe if it were the entire building inside was soundproof, that would go a long ways to uh, alleviating some of the concerns about if there's any noise that would be going on or entertainment or music going on inside. So I'm glad I mentioned that the requirement, and correct me if I'm wrong, planning, <laughs> uh, someone from planning. Uh, would you come forward, please? Don't, yeah, just one more, because I want to get clarification on it.
So I, I believe you're referring to the use specific standards for an entertainment establishment? Yes, I am. Which require that any building housing live entertainment shall include soundproof entryway and exit doors. Right. Um, and the, the proposed conditions were as long as well as the staff report were sent to the applicant prior to this meeting. Okay, thank you. Thank you. And so obviously a lot of information, but um, the reason I bring it up is because I would think that if the use permit is approved for the entertainment, that, as, that you would personally be willing hopefully, to soundproof the entire inside. If I could speak to that. Sure. I've actually <clears throat> spoke to one neighbor in particular, right next door to us. If our back is to the building, to the right is an antique store. Mm -hmm. um, I, I can't remember. His, his number's in my phone. And we had a running commentary back and forth about any, any sound or anything like that. I said, any event we're having, just let me know. I'm easy. Um, just let me know what's going on. And he had mentioned it to us, and we turned it down and everything like that. But in our conversations, I also spoke to him and I said, we're, according to our contract, we're supposed to buy this building by October of this year. All right, we, we run into all kind of stuff. COVID, we worked on the building all during COVID uh, 2020, right? We finally opened 2021. We're new to this. I've never owned a bar. She's never owned a bar. She just, we just wanted, she wanted to bring the books and the coffee, but unfortunately the wine had to be included to kind of carry some of the costs, right? So we brought that in, but we started doing tasting. Everything was classy. Um, everything that we're doing is classy. It's just the steps that, I don't know, it's, it's, it's frustrating because we're self-funding this. It's not like we're getting money from any outside source or anything like that. We're self-funding this. And every time it seems like we, we get some stuff going forward, it gets shut down. And then we see like a lot of the the big box stores and stuff like that just they i know they have a team i know they have a legal team behind them and i know you know they're they're reading all this paperwork and they're going over it and they can send people after that but it's just us literally us working in the building us doing everything i built the building out with my hands i have over a hundred thousand dollars invested in the building and the karaoke is um we we actually sold that house that I was telling you about. Dream house, five bedroom, over in Old Portsmouth, old, uh, old Churchland, to get this building open. Invested all the equity into this building, all right? So us being limited on the amount of stuff that we can do is just, it's, 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 it's hurtful. It's, it's just like seeing your dream just evaporate in front of your eyes. We, we want to follow all the rules. We want to follow all the standards. Like I said, I had to run a commentary with the next door neighbor. And then I, get, I don't know if he called. I don't know who called. But all of a sudden, we got the notice saying we had to shut it down as far as karaoke. And that was like one of our best nights. Um, so we're just, we'll do whatever we need to do to, to facilitate this, this next step. I don't know where the money going to come from, but we're going to try to get it. Um, but like I said, everything else that was required, the, the fireproofing on the stage and the, I mean, it's just, we're just trying to bring life to downtown. That's it, bring something different to downtown. It's not, it's, it's not, it's, it's not anything crazy or intrusive. You know, it's, it's something that really fits. It's something that's necessary, you know? And that's what everybody says. I don't know if, you know, we, we got letters in here or anything from, from the public, but that's what everybody is saying about the book club. I mean, I, I don't have no reason to come up here and tell you any, any mistruths. I don't know if any of the commissioners have been to the book club. Has anybody in here been to the book club? Yep. Did, did you enjoy yourself? I had a great time. <laughs> exactly, it's that type of place. She said she took her mom for Mother's Day. So it's that type of place. So I don't want anybody to think that it's, it's anything other than that, you know. Thank you. Commissioner Jiggins. Yes, did you? just let me say one more thing, sir. Uh, is it, it's McElvoy. McElvoy, is yes. McElvoy. Um, because I can't speak for everyone. Absolutely. But what I will say is 
the requirement of the soundproofing on the front and the back if it were approved, that would be required. I'm saying that correctly? I would just say to you, in my opinion, if you uh, were able to get the approval at this level, because you still have to go before city council, it, this is just, this isn't legally required, but to me, um, steps that can insulate noise mm -hmm. or absorb noise in an entertainment district is always a good thing. So just based on my perspective, um, the total soundproofing, but that's not a legal requirement, just the front and the uh, back inside. But I, I would just say. I've, I'm sorry, Ms. Commissioner. That's okay. I, I've called several companies uh -huh. um, about the soundproofing and I talked to the neighbor and I told him upon the purchase of the building, I would look at totally soundproofing the building because I don't want to inconvenience anybody. That's, that's not what we're there for. We're, we're there to add to, not take away. That's it. So, yeah. Thank you for those comments. Thank you. No, no problem. Thank you, Commissioner Jiggets. Commissioner Hines. Thank you, Mr. McElroy. Um, first, thank you for being here, one. Um, it's not easy to stand in front of any commission or any council or any of those things, um, kind of being by yourself as you just mentioned. So uh, I, I thank you for that. Uh, before I continue with my comments, I, I, I made some comments earlier during a staff report that you were squirming to answer. Yes. So if I can maybe just take a back seat and listen to understand before I talk okay. again, um, I'd like to hear your response to what I said earlier in that. Okay. You were speaking about, um, you, you said uh, that we've been having activities for the past two years. We haven't been open two years yet. Uh, October would be two years. Um, you also spoke to um, the paper on the window. Any private event that, because we also rent the building out to people for birthdays and stuff like that. So to me, putting the blinds down for a private event, wedding, anything like that, wouldn't be any different than closing the, the drapes and stuff like that. Like I said, we're self-built. So we had uh, the packing paper like you would do if you were doing construction. We had that on the window several times uh, for private events. But other than that, the windows as you see are what they normally look like, just like that. Um, the curtains and the, um, the sheer um, coverings. I did just order some, some blackout blinds actually to further that if somebody had a private event they can uh, pull down the uh, blinds. But other than that, that was it. Um, I, I think that I, we caught the tail end because we were supposed to be here at 1.30. So I was like, did they start early? I didn't understand the, like how everything works. So that's why I was putting my hand, I was like, ooh, ooh, ooh. But oh, I, that, again, I just, yeah, I, I, just, I believe that, you know, somebody shouldn't bring any sort of things to you if you wanted to have an opportunity to speak. So um, I wanted to give you that opportunity. Um, so, so thank you for that. Um, so the, the events that I did list off uh, that were featured prominently on social media, but before I jump into that, actually, let me go ahead and give my moment of thanking you for, because I know there are a handful of civic engagement events that have also been posted on Facebook. And thank you for the outreach you've had about restoration of rights. Uh, I've seen those. Um, so I wanted to give you a, a, a moment of shout out here. It's not necessarily because, you know, I, I don't believe in your mission. I believe in asking these questions and making sure that we have clarity and understanding going forward. Right. But on those events uh, that I listed out in the earlier on February 11th, December 29th, these, I mean, I'm sorry, October 29th, October 22nd, karaoke each Thursday and um, July 9th, 2022. These were all events that took outside of an email which you had sent to planning and zoning to say that you no longer required um, this use permit because you were just gonna stay with the original intent. 
Um, at what point did that decision made that you said, you know something, no, I, I really do want to do these activities. Um, was there a certain, any sort of hold up in terms of, you know, processing on the city end or anything of that nature? I, I just, I, I need to kind of understand intent here, I think, um, to, to, to maybe understand where you guys are on this. So, yes, sir, we weren't um, trying to step on anybody's toes. So, in uh, 2020, I think everybody in this room realizes that everything just shut down, right? So, different parts that we were trying to get, um, um, different inspections, um, um, just trying to get a piece of paper through zoning, all that stuff was like at a standstill. If you submitted anything, it was two weeks later before you heard anything back. Um, you had to constantly um, send stuff in uh, through emails. My wife, she championed all of this. I, I work a full-time job. I work for uh, HRCP. So my wife is in here full-time, and I come in after work and work here again. Um, but uh, so we're, we're pushing all this. She's pushing all this stuff through, and I'm calling just to check up on them. I'm like, babe, did you talk to this person? Yeah, I talked to this person. Um, they said next week they'll, they'll be able to get it to the next desk. So in the process of all that, some of this paperwork got mixed up. Um, we got zoned as a, as a banquet hall instead of um, what we were supposed to be considered as like a, like a uh, I don't know. She can speak more on this than I can. We were supposed to be considered like a cafe, all right? But we got considered a banquet hall. Yeah, I don't know if you guys see that in your paperwork. So chasing after that issue, that caused a bunch of other issues down the road when we're trying to get some other stuff done. They said, well, you're, you're, you're a banquet hall, so you can't do this. So then we had to backpedal to, so yes, it was, speaking of what you were talking about, it was definitely an issue with uh, the paperwork. Um, I can't point out everybody that we dealt with um, along the way, she knows all the names and stuff like that. But um, even when it came to um, our ABC license, we had to go back, pay some more money because of the way that we got listed as far as the type of business that we had. So it, it, some was on us, new people not knowing. She just had to dream. I just came in there and built it out, all right? So new people just starting some stuff out. And then also not knowing how to mitigate all the, the different hurdles and, and, and issues that you run into with city. I, I had no way of knowing that it was going to be this expensive. I'm thinking when they say a business fails most of the time in its first five years, it has to do with lack of drive, lack of push, lack of you know, determination to, to, to get this business seen by people. I didn't know that. It's a bunch of stuff that you got to get past with the city to be able to even function as a business. I didn't, I didn't know. So as we learned, we moved. We changed and we just, you know, made the decisions that we needed to make to go ahead and keep moving forward. That was, that was it. So nothing was done in um, any type of... Uh, ill will or anything like that. We didn't have any, we weren't trying to hide anything as far as the events. Y'all saw flyers, you know, for the, we didn't know, <laughs> you know? So y'all saw flyers. It's on the board in downtown, like right across from here. You know, it's, it's on the board. It's still on the board, but we're not having events. We stopped when we got that letter saying, you can't have these events. We stopped. And we, like I said, spoke with Michael Massey and and started working towards getting everything together for here. Um, we want to be on the up and up on everything we do. We, we, we're not trying to run some kind of speakeasy or something like that. So, like I said, we just, uh, if you can give us some direction and if you guys can give us some more insight and give us a little bit of leeway, we promise the book club will be something that you guys look at and be like, okay, this is like our baby right here. We helped birth this because we want to be here for a long time. Madam Chair, may I ask a follow-up? Sure. Thank you. Um, you. You spoke of a more recent letter. Um, planning staff, you do you to. guys have anything other? You said they were just recently notified again. Um, it was like a three, was it three months ago? 
that we had to stop the karaoke. Oh, yeah. It was it was three months ago. So, because so people, three months ago, you, you received some sort of notification from the city yes. saying that you had to cease. Yes. Now, uh, and, and, and please, I'm trying to follow along with you here. I really okay, am. I got you. Okay, I, I, I'm, I'm, I, I like to try to get to a yes here, but um, I've got some challenges here because I'm a big structure and order person, okay? I am that guy, so please forgive me if I sound like I'm questioning over, but there was also a notice to comply that was sent on March the 10th, um, detailing out, and then on March the 19th, um, it was sent by April McElroy saying you wanted to keep your existing conditions and nothing changing, okay? But then we've had all these other instances that have happened since then. So I, I'm trying to understand, hey, I'm, this is how I fix it, but then I really don't want to fix it because I'm happy with my, my wine bar, my whatever the case may be. And then there's a whole string of events we just talked about, and now there's a notification in March. I, I guess I need to kind of understand where the motivation took place from that wasn't there in March of 2021 that now is there in March of 2023. 2021. I, I just got a copy of the email. That's the reason why I'm, I'm referring to these. Yeah, I don't, I don't know of an uh, email in 2021, but I will tell you that we Which were, we were putting out a lot of fires in 2021 running around. Can I come? Yeah. Can, can you approach please? Yes. So here, here's what we're saying here. Just make sure the following there. So on this email right here, it says basically we, You make sure, make sure, yeah, you make sure they, they want to be able to hear you, I'm sure. Um, but let's, let's, let's talk about the, I just want to make sure you're seeing what we're seeing here, um, because I believe in transparency. So, um, yeah, looking at this email right here, it's saying that we, we couldn't even apply for an entertainment permit at, the, at that moment due to possible changes in regulations being made. Um, okay, so if I'm remembering right, the, the, clitty, the city clearances state that you can't open uh, establishment with entertainment within 250 feet of a church. That's what it was. So I took my roller and I don't know if you got the extreme side of the building, but it's like one more window to the right of that picture. So that's the outside edge of the building. It's a big stone church. I don't know what the name of it is, but it's on the corner of Washington and um, High Street. I walked my roller tape out there and um, rolled all the way down to the steps of the church and it measured 247 feet. Two, 247 feet from the outer wall of the building. Uh, Madam Chair, may I ask staff a question as a follow-up on that? Sure, Commissioner Hines. Uh, Ms. Aduma uh, and staff, whoever may be appropriate for that, A, does such a condition exist? And then B, does um, such a use permit, if this was brought to the staff's attention, would that have not come to the Planning Commission at that time? for some sort of variance or something of that nature. So the applicant is correct that at that point, the 40.1 the zoning ordinance did contain a number of distance separators. And one of them was that a entertainment establishment could be not, could not be located within I, I believe he's correct with the 250 feet. Um, so that if they had applied at that point, they it wouldn't have been able to go forward because it does it wouldn't comply with the zoning ordinance. So I'm assuming that the planning staff notified the applicant that 
they should wait until the new ordinance was adopted, which in the new ordinance, which is our current ordinance, the, those distance separators were removed. So then at that point, they would then be able to apply and be in compliance with um, the standards for an entertainment establishment. So yet another follow-up, I guess, then would be is that the ordinances that were passed in that package of ordinances of thousands that we wish went through, or is that a previous pack of ordinances that were approved in 2021 or 2022? This was in um, 2020 and 2021, we, the planning staff, did almost like a complete rewrite of the zoning ordinance and that was um, passed I believe in December of 2020 and then was effective um, in February of 2021. So this was the previous um, set of code amendments that was adopted in 2020. So when he was opening his business in October of 2020, that would have been the rule. However, on March the 10th, when he was notified of a notice to comply, then that would have been a actual new rule that would have changed that distance. Am I understanding that correctly? Can I see when that was? I just want to verify when the emails were sent. Because Am I a year off, Jeff? Okay. So, yeah, I'm not sure because I, I believe that the new ordinance would have been in effect in March of 2021. So unless they were informed, uh, misinformed, they should have been able to apply for the entertainment establishment at that point, which they may have been misinformed. I'm not sure. Can we check that? That's, that was actually going to be my next question is Just check that. I, I would, I would like for us to think about a couple of things and this is to the applicant. You, yeah. You, there's letters that came in, not in support of your application today. Um, it doesn't seem like uh, there's people that feel that you have been a great neighbor. Um, and I think that there could be opportunity for this to happen, but I think there needs to be some work and repair that needs to take place with your neighbors before it can, quite frankly. Um, that's just me as a, as a resident speaking right now, not as a commissioner. I would, I, I think that there could be some conditions that maybe you can offer that might be able to make it more palatable for the neighborhood. For example, cut off time of so noises, things of that nature to, you know, because not two blocks off from your place here is people's residences. And uh, I, for one, wouldn't want two blocks off of my residence to have two <clears throat> o'clock in the morning music playing at loud decibels with no sound uh, kind of thing. So I, I know that those types of conditions do exist. I don't know if it's your, your environment, or whatnot, but um, I, I think that that might be something that maybe you could work with your community as well. But I think we probably should have that answered before this commission weighs in, quite frankly, as to what was said or informed of the aptus applicant in order to be impartial and fair to, to that. Um, Can I? So, so by all means, but I'm, I'm going to probably make a different motion but by all means. Okay. Uh, so I happen to see some of my neighbors behind me, the business neighbors. Um, but um, our events shut down, like the karaoke, when we were having it, it shuts down at uh, 12 midnight. So it doesn't go past that. It's 12 midnight, it shuts down. Um, it starts at 8.30. Starts at 8.30, so it's three and a half hours of karaoke. Um, that being said, directly before karaoke was a line dancer. So people would come in before, but that music was nowhere near what karaoke was. 
Um, it was just small speaker, people doing steps. Uh, all right, so I'm, I'm, I guess I have a misunderstanding about um, the business district of Old Town. So I hear um, during city council meetings and stuff like that, people talk all the time and they say, we want business in downtown. We want, we want business in downtown. All right, and, and you have people that live in downtown. You have people that live in Ghent. You have people that live in, you know, Waterside, right above these different establishments that's down there. Those people want to be able to walk up, because me and her talked about buying a place downtown, right? And it was it's for the convenience of being able to walk up to a bar, and get something to drink, mm -hmm. go out with your family, go get something to eat, um, close to parks and dog walks and stuff like that. But be around the hub bub so you can, you know, move around. You're close, right? So I, I don't understand why somebody would live downtown if they don't want the downtown environment. You know, people that don't want the downtown environment move to like, you know, the outskirts of Portsmouth, you know, the areas like that. And downtown is always going to change. It's always going to change. The building that you guys might know where we're located if I say Skipjacks. Y'all remember mm -hmm. Skipjacks? Everybody remember Skipjacks. So that, that was Skipjacks. Skipjacks moved out of town. That building was empty. We're doing something that brings people from Elizabeth City. All parts of Carolina have had people come from New York for different events and stuff. And all of our events aren't like that. It's, it's Mother's Day events. It's Father Day events, father daughter dances, like necessary stuff. So I, I know we got a few more hurdles. I don't want to go into a whole spiel, but it's definitely an uh, addition to Portsmouth. It's not, it's not taken away at all. Mr. Hines, are you finished? I, I'm going to be done for now. I imagine there's some people that might be here that are wanting to speak, and it is our duty to listen to them as well. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Curry. Good day. Good day, Mr. and Mrs. McElroy. Hey. I am first upset with you both because I had no idea this place even exists. <laughs> it's um, word of I, mouth, really. <laughs> um, I was able to go on your social media and look at some of the events that they have and see um, quite a people um, who we've been elected in office um, frequently visit your place. Yes. Uh, I see you guys sell food. Am I correct? Right. Panini, we got a panini grill in the building, yes. Um, well, we pray it's good food. Yeah. Okay. Um, with the chess tournament, um, you guys do, is that like for just for the community, like for the attract the youth or? Um, anybody that wants to, wants to be involved, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Uh, two more questions, I'm done. Is there an age requirement for some of your events that you have? Uh, well, the chess, the chess tournaments, no, they aren't. Um, obviously, um, like the karaoke, yeah, you got to be 21 and up just because alcohol is in the building and we just don't want kids to be, you know, near that, that's it. Okay, and my last question to you, has the police ever been called for unruly behavior at your establishment? I called the police myself one time. It was some people outside the building that were, actually I called the police twice. One time I called the police because I found a pocketbook by my dumpster in the back. They never showed up. Um, it had uh, some needles in it, it had an ID and it had a credit card. I didn't know if somebody had got robbed, whatever the case may be. I didn't want anybody to come in contact with the needles, so I called the police. Two days later, I ended up going back there and throwing that pocketbook in the trash. Um, the other time, it was some people arguing on the sidewalk in front of the establishment, and I called the police. At that time, we were still working on the building, and I had to tell him, yeah, we're not even open for business. So I said, can you please get them out of here? Because I don't know what they got going on. And so that was it. OK, thank you. Thank you. Commissioners, are there any additional questions for the applicant? OK, thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a public hearing for item UP-23-09. I do have one registered speaker. You may come forward and you have up to five minutes to speak. Janine DeMello.
Good afternoon. My name is Janine DeMello. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I own a condominium at 630 High Street. I'm here representing our condominium association, of which there are three residents in our building, and there's a little business downstairs of our building. Um, we, unfortunately, were not on the list of notified buildings for some reason. I know that that's required of adjacent properties, but maybe perhaps because we're to the second left of the applicant's building, I know some of the folks across the street and whatnot were uh, invited to share their information, but whether it's an oversight or whether it's just a numbers game on which, you know, properties get notified, I'm here to speak for our building. Um, I agree. I mean, I, if, if, I think that if the uh, description that was given of the property um, and the applicant's um, intended use was what we were discussing today, I probably wouldn't be here. So let me just first off start off by saying I was probably one of your first patrons um, when the business came into play and I thought it was lovely. I went in, I actually had met April briefly, she may not remember, and I had a cup of coffee and I thought, wow, this is awesome. This is gonna be great. We need this. Unfortunately, it has morphed into perhaps something that wasn't the initial use, whether that was intended, not intended, I can't speak to that. Um, I'm leaning towards the fact that perhaps after all this time, the growing pains should be over and the, both the applicant and the community kind of have uh, a sense of what has happened in the establishment and what is happening moving forward. And I think Mr. Hines touched on a couple of the things. Um, I wanted to make a couple of just, you know, kind of broad points and they speak to sort of what's been said already, but let me add a few things. Um, the original intent in the four corners of their application, and I did go ahead and pull that up because I didn't want to speak out of turn, was specifically for the use that they did describe uh, as a bookstore, um, public events, some, like I know the Mother's Day event, things like that. Unfortunately, like I said when I first started speaking, that it has morphed into other things entirely. The, the question isn't necessarily the use or having the, the sound issue. I think those things can be cured, of course. Unfortunately, initially in the build, um, a lot of the soundproofing material from the ceiling was all removed, whether it was for aesthetics or the kind of the vibe they wanted to have in the building. And I understand that that probably did deteriorate some of the um, noise canceling, you know, opportunities that were there. That was just one thing. I know that the building in between us, because like I said, we're here and then there's Anderson Wright and then there's the applicant. We've even had issues with sound, and we're quite a bit away from them. Um, I know that the applicant probably does try to vet as much as they can, the patrons, but after a certain time, you can't. I've seen tickets being sold on social media. Um, it, you know, you're purchasing tickets on Eventbrite and things of that nature. You can't vet those people. People are coming from other places. They're coming from out of town. They have nowhere to stay. Where do they go at midnight? We also share a parking lot with these folks. So behind us is us coming in from work or play or you know guests that are at our properties, things of that nature. I know we have some elderly residents in the building right next to us and they have an issue. It's not lit, it's not secure, there are no security cameras. They're having events, I get that, but these events are going well into the night. So there's no additional security. It's not well lit. Um, that's become an issue. Again, this is the morphing process. Yeah. So my question is, are those things going to be remedied in these um, conditions that they're being asked to meet? The idea of um, entertainment establishment, there was a lot of description and there's a lot of definition when you looked in both the city guidelines and the proposed conditions that they're asked, that the folks are, the applicants are being asked to meet. Um, I'm not sure why an, an ABC liquor license is trying to be obtained before they've met the criteria for a liquor license. My understanding is that you have to have a kitchen, you have to serve hot food. I don't think any of those criteria have been met. Um, 
the advertising I have an issue with, it's all over social media, most events, even the, I mean, there's some great events, don't get me wrong, like I said, I've attended some of them as well. But when I'm looking here, even as early as today, uh, three hours ago, there's a spirit and cocktail tasting event happening. I didn't, well, I was not under the impression they had the ability to serve alcohol there. And uh, that concerns me because it's ongoing. Again, these are things that I was told were not gonna be happening, but yet they're happening even more than they were initially. Mr. Mello. Yes. If you could Sorry. wrap it up, please. Sure. Thank you. Um, anyway, I have access to all that information if you folks would like. But when I'm seeing things, like I said, even posted three hours ago, you know, hashtag full bar, hashtag cocktails, I didn't think we were going in that direction. I thought we were kind of pulling back. So we appreciate any help you can give us, and I'm here to answer any questions. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Mello. Thank you. Commissioner Curry, did you have a question? I was just wanted to look over the North ordinance, just trying to see what the North Office of the Portland, but I found it on the uh, our website. That's what I wanted to verify. Okay, thank you. Commissioners, are there any additional questions? Commissioner Hines? Yes, thank you. Um, so, so you have to have this particular permitting for there to be a ABC license uh, permitted, correct? Or is that incorrect? <coughs> Members of staff, uh, probably that would be. You need ABC license for to sell the alcohol. Then right. They, then they submit the application to city. The city looks at it to see if they're okay. Then if there's a can you turn your microphone on, please? <laughs> you, you, <laughs> I apologize. Thank you. They will. You need the ABC license to sell the alcohol. The, the, the ABC Corporation alerts us. We look at the location, the zoning, and then if everything's okay, then we in turn, we, we, we route it to various departments to make sure they have input as well, and if there's no problem, then at that point we say it's okay. And if they had, had, had submitted an, an application for ABC for um, the, the current use of bookstore and all of that, we wouldn't have had restaurant. Well, the ABC determines uh, how one uh, prepares and serves food. I've gone to places they've had um, uh, little th those little carts outside that sold food, or they've had a little small area inside where they sold quick food. So they make determination whether you have to have a full kitchen or just a small area that you can prepare food. That that's on them. So in the, in the packet, it does mention that the zoning office did object to the ABC license. Mm -hmm. is, is, and is that still our stance at this point? Yes. Yet yeah, there's been alcoholic beverages served. Is, can, can I ask the applicant that question? Is that an inbound? Yes. Thank you. Yes, if you come up here, sir. All right, yes, we have a full bar ABC license. We have the capacity to be able to make food in the building. We make food every day. Um, we're responsible for maintaining a certain amount of food sales to cover our liquor sales. Um, part of this shutdown is why we started going after the, the liquor to increase sales because we weren't making any money from karaoke anymore probably would have never had liquor if we didn't get shut down from karaoke because I didn't desire liquor. I just wanted wine and beer. But because, like I said, we didn't have karaoke, we needed something to offset the, you know, the lack of funds coming in. So we got approved for our ABC license. We do have a full bar. Um, the parking is to talk about the parking situation. So our patrons park on the street in the front. <clears throat> Um, for the events, they park on the street in the front. Um, I think they're talking and getting us confused with another event space three doors down. I am, and I do have security. My patrons ask me about security. I'm coming out of pocket paying for security. I have security standing by the front door during karaoke um, all night long. They don't pat our patrons down, but they do warn them. Um, me personally, when I go up to a place 
and somebody wants to pat me down, I turn around and walk away because you don't see it at all establishments, right? But to make sure that our patrons are safe, I have that there. Um, I had that there before we had to shut down karaoke. Um, so I think they kind of got me confused with some other events that's going on down the street because I don't allow anybody to park in the back. Nobody, because it's an elevated city park. Now it's public parking behind the building, but it's off of the building. The, the, um, it's like an elevated place and it's like a, um, a, a wall, recess wall or something like that, like a retaining wall. And so uh, people can park along that because that's where the, um, the pharmacy people park along that way. And then on Sundays, all the church people park back there. But as far as my patrons, they don't park behind the building. They all park on High Street um, for karaoke and stuff. And on the side road over there on Washington, like everybody else. But as far as around the other, no, I'm a pit bull about that. And, and anybody that comes to my establishment will tell you, like, where'd you park? Why are you knocking on the back door? No, pull back around front. You well, know, you didn't work in control. Where oh, you park? I got my light on to speak. He was Commissioner Jiggets, he was still speaking. Say, I thought I still had the floor, but you thank do. you, Ms. Parliamentarian. My apologies. Um, the, um, you could no more control who parks in a public space than anybody else. So yeah. I can't even hold you to that standard. Thank you for allowing me to finish that comment. Thank you, Commissioner Hines. Commissioner Jiggins? Uh, yes, thank you. Again, my apologies to Commissioner Hines. I thought you were finished. Um, I just want to make the comment. I'm glad to hear that you have your ABC license. Uh, many people may not be aware, when you have your ABC license, that is actually what we call an asset on your financial balance sheet, mm -hmm. that ABC license. And I wanted to make mention of that because that is not an easy feat to accomplish. No, it's not. There are a lot of steps you have to go through. And on your financial statement, on your business financial statement, you can actually list your ABC license as an asset because it is an asset. That's the comment I wanted to make. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Curry, did you have a question? Okay. <laughs> Thank you. No, Commissioners, any additional questions? No? Okay. Thank you, Mr. McElroy. Um, ladies and gentlemen, this is a public hearing on item UP-23-09. If there's anyone here who did not get an opportunity to register and would like to address this application, you may come forward, state your name and your address for the record, and you will have up to five minutes to speak. Good afternoon. My name's Elaine Kaplan. I live at 623 Queen Street. I've lived in Old Town Portsmouth for 22 years. I had a business on the high street called Ma Maison, which actually is in a building at 630 High Street. Um, okay, so this is what I'd like to say. My husband and I have lived in Portsmouth, as I said, for 22 years. We owned a big house on Court Street. We owned a building, 630 High Street, the whole building. We started from scratch. This has been an unbelievably terrible time. My husband and I got attacked. The kid that attacked us kicked my husband to the ground, left, right, and center, and praise God, he didn't have a gun or a knife. The place that he's talking about, I'm not mixing his place up with the place that was raided and they found 15 guns and fentanyl and everything like that. That's literally behind where we live. Where he has is here. That noise from his bar or whatever you want to call it, we could hear it in our home. We're not next door. Anderson Wright is next door. Bill from Anderson Wright had to move out of his apartment because he couldn't sleep because of the noise and the vibration from the music. All 
also, they had their windows covered, yes, with paper, because they were selling marijuana. And the police raided them. So don't let, don't think that this is some sort of hello mummy daddy thing. This is not. They had what I call a heavy standing outside in a black suit, and I don't even know if he had a gun or not, but I can tell you it was scary. We want Portsmouth, we want High Street to flourish. We have a business here for 20 years. I'm an interior designer. And we still own a building here, which we live on the top floor of it. I'm a very big fan of Portsmouth, but I'm not a fan of this kind of thing. Children, they don't let li children in there with liquor. They let children in there with marijuana. The police chief himself has come forward and said he does not want these people to have an alcohol and ent entertainment license. He has said he does not want it because he knows when he raided that place what was going on inside it. And I'm sorry, I have to speak the truth and I have to speak it plain because if you give these people a license, that's it. They'll be able to do exactly what they want and nobody will be able to do one thing about it. Yeah, there's one in there. When my husband got kicked, knocked down, there was nobody that came to our help. I just screamed and screamed and screamed and this guy ran off. This is serious. These are not games we're playing. We live here. We love this place. We wouldn't still be here if we didn't. Thank you. This, this world is just not safe. And we don't want this lovely place called Old Town, this high street, to be any more destroyed. Because I can tell you, the smell of marijuana on the street is unreal. And I would like you all to look in the mirror and look into your hearts and say, would you like this if your parents live there, if your children live there? I've got 18 signatures that I went round all the houses. And they're somewhere here because Bill from Anderson Wright bought them here yesterday. 18 residents said, we don't want this. That's not a misunderstanding with your, with your neighbors. This is a serious problem. Ma'am. Anyway, I've finished. I'm, my time's up. Yes, ma'am. But thank you very much for letting me speak. I greatly appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Barnes. Is there any way that we can get like records of the police chief saying anything or a police report that was shown. Excuse me. Hmm? If, if y'all will, in the audience, hang on just one second, please. Ms. Adamoa. We do have a police report attached to the staff report. He did not mention a, a rating the, the site. He did mention activities, the website, uh, advertisements, but he did not say that he had raided the site and found drugs or anything like that. Right. It's my understanding, if I recall the package correctly, it was just a letter from Chief Jenkins. Yes, and he also uh, attached the pictures. He wanted the pictures. He did that too. Okay, but there was no police reports in our package. No, not, not, not just, the, just, just, just the memo. That's okay. It. All right. Thank you. Commissioner Barnes. Okay. Commissioner. Ma'am, we, we, we have to go in order, so hang on, okay? Thank you so much. 
Commissioner Curry? Um, do we? You said the letter is, is from the chief of police? The, there is a letter in our package yes, that we received from staff from Chief Jenkins. It, if I remember correctly, it just basically summarized his feelings on the establishment and he also provided pictures, which were pictures of uh, advertisings that appeared online. But if, unless Ms. Adam walk and tell me I overlooked something, I think that that's all that was in the package. The summation. Right, so there was no rating for this establishment. Not at, in the memo, it and doesn't the, mention and There's that. no saying that marijuana came from this establishment whatsoever. It was not noted in this memo. Right, and the attack didn't, it's been come from noted the, in this memo. Thank you so much. Commissioner Hines. You're next. Hold on. I believe uh, Commissioner Jiggett's light had actually lit before okay. mine. Okay. So I'm sorry. I will defer to her. Sure. Thank you. Commissioner Jiggett's. Thank you. My apologies. Um, and certainly to Ms. Mrs. Mason. Is that how you pronounce it? Kaplan. Certainly so sorry that you and your husband had to go through the attack, but we just have to be objective. That attack did not take place at the applicant's venue. And so we have to maintain objectivity, hopefully, and, and certainly my heart goes out to you because no one wants that to happen in terms of being susceptible or experiencing an attack. And so I just wanted to say that to you on that, on that note. But uh, in terms of the activities going on at the applicant's place of establishment, there were no reportable incidents having to do with assault. That's that's my understanding, not at the applicant's establishment. M so Ms. Cap, can, can I interrupt you all? I apologize. Sure. If you want to respond, would you please come back up here? Thank you so much. So I just want to say I am sincerely apologetic that you had to go through what you and your husband went through. However, we have to be fair and objective to everyone. And in terms of the applicant and in terms of what has been verified from the planning director, interim director, the chief of police, and when I read the package, I didn't see anything from the chief of police that alluded to assaults in the establishment or marijuana smoking. So I just, you know, I want to give my apologies to you, but I also want to, and I'm sure you understand, we've, we've got to try to maintain objectivity as we approach uh, this application. But thank you so much. Well, I totally understand that. I mean, I've been here, you know, I've had my own business here for many, many years. I understand that. What concerns me is how things so quickly get out of control because people are too loose. And what concerns me is if they get this license, what, it's like, that's it. So maybe if there's some constraints, maybe if there's um, some promises, maybe if they can do what is right and we can all feel safe. I mean, we're talking about safety here. You know, I mean, the back of their establishment, there is a parking lot. But the fact is that people, when they leave somewhere at 12, 1 in the morning, and they get into their cars and they turn on their radios really loud, it's, we live there. This is a residential. Yes, the high street is business. 
I understand that. I had my own business there for all those years. I totally understand that. But when you're not uh, reasonable about the noise factor, it's not, we're not an island. We don't live on an island. We live with other people. We work and live with other people. Just be mindful of others. Be caref caring about others. That's all we're really asking for. And so far, we have not, you know, 18 people are not going to sign a, a letter for nothing. That's 18 residents. Mm. Anyway, thank you. Thank you very much for listening to me. Thank, thank you, you, Ms. Kaplan. Commissioner Hines. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I, I'm still, I guess, a, a little lost here because I believe in things following in a normal flow chart of activities and that one thing has to happen before the next thing can happen before the next thing can happen. But I, I've heard staff say that they basically have to bless the ABC license. And again, am I hearing that correctly before the ABC board would even go forward? Am, am I hearing that correctly? That's going to be my next question, but thank you. Um, so I did just look up. I wasn't texting, by the way. I'm listening to you guys, but I don't have internet connection on this device, but I do on my phone. Um, they do actually have a full license. Um, so I, I guess I'm kind of lost in how the process that should go from point A to point B to point C to point D somehow has gone from point B to point D or E here. So uh, can maybe somebody fill in the blank here for me? At some point, the applicant met the requirements of the zoning administrator. And I don't know what date it was or you know what the use was, but at that point when the ABC uh, organization uh, spoke with him or sent him um, an email about it, he must have looked at the current use and it was permitted. And as a result, he would have signed off based on that. Okay, so I guess the, the, the next question is, um, or comment. So we, we've got a number of concerns here. We, we, we may have a zoning administrator that told this person that they couldn't apply because they're inside the 250 feet. We've got an ABC license that somehow has mysteriously made it through from point A to point D. And in the middle, I have 18 residents who took the time out of their, and I received the letters, thank you. Um, Nine times out of 10, I am siding 100% with residents here. And I will tell you, at the beginning of this, I had in my head that I was not going to support this. Um, I still may not, but um, I would like for us to consider 30 days worth of deferral for some of these questions to be answered. Um, because I think there are some things that we need to have some answers to. Mm -hmm. uh, secondly, I'd like for the applicant to try to maybe reach out to the Old Town Business That's Association good. and his neighbors and see if there are potentially some conditions that can make their neighbors potentially a little happier. Um, I think that could actually be beneficial to this process. Now, I, I'm just one commissioner speaking here, but um, I think, and then also, last but not least, the chief of police has spoken uh, on this on this matter, detailing out events that uh, happened in 2021. Uh, if this is the condition that's being relayed to us by our residents, maybe the situation has gotten worse, and maybe we need an update from the chief of police on his status here. But he, he only is talking about 
the ABC license. Well, that's done been since remedied. Um, and this is dated May 30th. <laughs> and he's had his license since then. So I, I find it hard to, to put a whole bunch of stock mm -hmm. in this um, on that note. So I'd actually like to make a motion that we defer to have staff address and research all matters of this and to bring it back at our next scheduled meeting. Thank you, Commissioner Hines. Madam Secretary. Okay. Commissioner, we're still at the point where if there's any other, uh, if there's anyone else here who did not get an opportunity to register and would like to speak, you can come forward now, state your name and your address, and you have five minutes. Good afternoon, y'all. My name is Stacy Gregory. I actually live at 630 High Street, two doors down. Um, and I've actually spoken with the two of you on several occasions and have been, have been in your establishment. And uh, the people that work with you actually worked with me, the company I'm currently with. Um, and I have a long friendship with them as well. Um, I am not against them having a business. I'm not against them being able to do events or anything like that. What I'm against is making sure that I'm safe my neighbors are safe, my daughter and her friends are safe, and we're not listening to music till 2 a.m., okay? Um, yes, I am one of the ones that have called the police for noise, um, for noise after midnight, things like that. So yes, I am one of those, but I've never had an issue. They have not been raided. You guys are 100% correct. There's been no raid or anything in their establishment. That was special occasions. We've had issues with them. We haven't seen anything happen there in a while. So that's good. Yeah, but um, I'm sorry, I'm nervous. I apologize, y'all. Um, I just want to know that we can work and live together. I am happy and open to having meetings with you guys once a month, something like that, so that we can all be on the same page and be able to do it together. You're right. This is your dream. I want to support it. I am one of those people that wants to bring Portsmouth back. I am one of those people, and I am happy to participate in that. But I need to know that we can all live cohesively. Um, there is one condition in here. Do you guys have surveillance? OK. You do have not outside, but inside. OK. I believe that's in here, that it's required outside as well. Um, and, and that would help me with peace of mind. Um, and the soundproofing that you brought up, I'm on the third floor, and it comes right in. Ma'am, um, yes. if I may, I'm sorry for interrupting sure. you. If you could try to avoid com conversation oh, out yes. there. Oh, yes, I'm so sorry. It's okay. I apologize. I'm <laughs> okay, I apo I'm, I'm used okay. to talking with people so and having conversations. So we can all hear you up here. <laughs> gotcha, I understand, not a problem. Um, but like I said, I think you were talking about the soundproofing. I think that's a big issue um, because I want them to be able to do what they can do to be successful in what they want to do in Portsmouth. Um, just being respectful of the neighbors and of the community, I think is important. And the late hours. And of course, the people that come out of the establishment, make them disperse. Use your security and tell them go. You gotta go home. I can't tell you how many times I've had to open my window and yell out, go home. It's one o'clock in the morning. And I'm not saying it's coming from them, but it could be, I don't know. Um, but I just, I just want us to be able to live and work together and do things right. I'm a, I'm a process person too. I really am. And I just want things done right. Okay? I support them as long as we're doing it correctly. That's all I got. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take a five minute break and come back at 2.55. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back to the Tuesday, June 6, 2023 Planning Commission meeting. Madam Secretary. Thank you, Madam Chairman. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, this is a public hearing. If there's anyone else here who did not get an opportunity to register and would like to address UP-23-09, you may come forward, state your name and address for the record, and you will be given up to five minutes to speak. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Catherine Schur. Yeah. I'm at 325 Court Street. 
Um, before I, I um, like this is maybe a two or three part uh, comment period. Um, I'm just curious if the commission members have read all the letters and the information that's been sent to you on this project. It's, it didn't seem like I was kept waiting for someone to say, well, to, especially to the, the applicants, say, are you aware of, of all the people that are against this establishment, but nobody said anything about any of that. I, I believe um, that there yeah. was. Okay. Yes. Um, at, at least it, it wasn't a, like there was some question about whether people had read uh, mm -hmm. Chief Jenkins or even knew that was in there in the packet. I've read, I've gone through the whole packet. Yes, ma'am. And um, I'm just, so I was anyways. I was kind of concerned about that. So I have my letter because I wrote a letter um, that I want to make sure everybody knows because if people in the audience weren't didn't take the time to read the whole packet, they wouldn't maybe necessarily know that there's a lot of people that don't want to have this to happen. Yes, ma'am. So just, to, just quickly, um, I'm a 40-year resident. Um, so I have been here probably longer than some of you maybe have been, or since you were children or maybe <laughs> have been alive. But, um, and I've um, always been a big proponent of, of the Old Town Business District as well as, of course, our Old Town community. And um, because one, they work in sync. You know, one helps the other and the other helps the other. Um, because uh, since we're so close, we, um, and we patronize businesses in the, in the um, Old Town area, um, we want to be good neighbors. And likewise, you want the businesses to be good neighbors. And everything that I'm hearing, they are not good neighbors. They are not what they are proposing that they are. Um, I've talk, I've, I'm good friends with Bill Schlatt, <coughs> who's the proprietor of Anderson Wright, and I just happened to be in a shop um, doing some, you know, buying some things for our yard, and uh, he asked me, he said, um, are you aware of the book club? I said, well, just what I'm hearing on the street. And I said, it doesn't sound like it's, uh, it's going to be a good business for our, for our community, and he said, no, it's absolutely not. Um, and I think he said he has called the police before because of the noise level. Um, so... Um, I started asking around, and uh, sure enough, it wasn't, um, it wasn't what we thought it was. And I looked at it on the social media sites. And I guess uh, from my history and living in this area, you know, uh, several of us in the community have had to shut down two of these uh, establishments um, in the past. The mansion, which was on High Street, and um, no, David's. David's was first. It took us a while because it was the same thing. They said they were going to have polka, they were going to have bridge, they were going to have you know, weddings, baby showers, but that's not what happened. It turned into an event club that was open till you know, at least two in the morning, sometimes even beyond. Uh, they always had to have security out front and they were always frisking um, uh, for guns and uh, different kinds of weapons. And eventually we went to the ABC board and shut them down because they were in violation of what the ABC license said. And so I was just asking uh, one of the planners here, um, which has priority, the ABC or the zoning, and I think it's the ABC board. And it's my understanding that the ABC board, in order to have a liquor license at all, um, they have to be able to serve hot food. They have to have a kitchen. This place does not have a kitchen. I'm familiar with, uh, it used to be an antique shop before it was Skipjacks. Um, so it does not have a kitchen. So, uh, you know, that, in other words, that's, that's how we shut down David's, and that's how we shut down the mansion also was through the ABC board. We would like to not have to go that route. We'd like for this planning commission to see what this, this, if they can't even follow the guidelines, and they've been told what the guidelines are, and they're not even open as an establishment for entertainment, and they're already being in violation, how on earth <laughs> could we grant them a license to then go ahead and do that? So on that note, I only have a minute left. I'm going to read you what I wrote here, just in case you missed it. Um, uh, as a 40-year resident of Old Town Portsmouth Historic District, I'm an active proponent of our Portsmouth downtown area. Over the years, I have dined at a variety of restaurants that populate High Street and have supported many of the retail businesses in the past as well as the present. I realize how important a diverse downtown is and how it impacts the Old Town neighborhood, which helps support those proprietors. We all flourish when we are good neighbors. Unfortunately, according to residents and business owners in close proximity to the book club, this establishment is not a good neighbor. They have repeatedly violated the guidelines under their current use permit by hosting pop-up events that sell illegal substances as well as frequently frequently playing loud, amplified music. 
This business is creating a negative environment and is a detriment to that block of High Street, a block which used to have art shops as well as vibrant antique shops. And then I, I went on to urge you to vote no on this. On this, um, I, I don't see any reason to postpone it, but if you will, I'll come back in the next time. But I certainly uh, think that you should vote no. They, sh they probably shouldn't even have a liquor license because they don't even have a kitchen in there. Um, any questions? Nope. Thank you very much. Okay. Commissioners, any questions? Madam Secretary. Thank you, Madam Chairman. If there's anyone else here who did not get an opportunity to register and would like to address this application, you may come forward, state your name and your address, and you will be given up to five minutes to speak. Hello, my name is Crystal Kempton. I'm at 607 High Street, um, across the street. And um, I want to see businesses flourish on High Street. I was glad to see somebody went in there. They did a nice job renovating the place, but there has been a lot of things that isn't on what they have said that they were going to do in the beginning. I've re, uh, I live above my building as well, and um, I've changed out the windows, everything. Everything's insulated. I barely hear a fire truck until it gets right on me, but I can hear that music that's vibrating in my house. And I'm across the street. So, and the parking thing is a big deal there, not in any, you know, they can't control where people park, but with all the pop-ups and things that they were doing, they're parking in the bus lanes or parking everywhere. They don't have any power over controlling that. It's just everywhere. So as long as everything's going along like it's supposed to, and they're meeting the guidelines, but I don't understand how anybody got an ABC license without a kitchen. I mean, that's the law. That's why you can do a brewery now and you can have a food truck out front, so they're getting away with it, and restaurants don't even like that. But to get a full-blown alcohol license without a kitchen is beyond me unless they've changed the guidelines because I've had to get one before. So, but I want the business to flourish. I don't, I'm not here to say shut them down, but we have, to, we have to, like, have guidelines and things be watched because it does affect all the other businesses around. And when people feel safe walking down the street, this, that, and the other, you know, I'm trying to get the city to light it up more down there, make sure all the light bulbs are brighter and all that stuff. So just everyone feels safe. But um, I'm from Portsmouth originally, and I've had a business down here since 2010, and I've been in business for 25 years. So you do have to be courteous of your neighbors. You do have to think about what's going on around you. It's not just about what we're doing and how it affects them. And so, and you know, I understand um, financial things of like trying to get more business in there, but you just can't come up with things that you aren't approved for, you don't have a license for, nobody really realizes going on. So the book club is beautiful. They've done a great renovation and the people that have actually been in there for certain things in the beginning, it was gorgeous. I haven't had the opportunity to go in there, but um, it started just becoming more like a club. And it was consistent. Every Tuesday night pop up, every Thursday night's karaoke, all these other things, but that's not what they were approved for initially. So I would just like everybody to take that in consideration. If, if that can all be fixed, then that's not a problem. Like I said, I don't want an empty hole there. They've done a beautiful job, but the noise and the insulation, all those things have to be addressed. And I think, you know, and a lot of the businesses down here, we just need more people checking up on the guidelines for everyone. You know, their business licenses, all those things. For those of us that are doing exactly what they're supposed to, and then you see everybody else getting away with stuff they're not supposed to be doing and nobody's doing anything about it, it's a problem. So, uh, ma'am, ma if they open a full one. If you could wrap. Yeah, but if up. they open a full blown entertainment establishment, they're going to be in there at two in the morning. There's no way around that. Most of them, that's the guidelines. So, thank you. No, thank you very much. Commissioners, any questions? Madam Secretary. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Ladies and gentlemen, if there's anyone else here who did not get an opportunity to register and would like to address this application, you may come forward, state your name and your address, and you will be given up to five minutes to speak. Appearing to be none, Madam Chairman, and members of the Planning Commission, this public hearing is now closed. Thank you, Madam Secretary. Commissioners, uh, is there any more discussion? Madam Chairman, uh, our... Um, Commissioner Hines, sorry. Thank you for acknowledging me there. Uh, our applicant has raised his hand as if he needs to add some clarity. Can we hear from him, please? Sure. The applicant... Hold on. If you could just refrain from, hot, from 
speaking up from the audience, I would greatly appreciate it. If the applicant would like to come back up here, he is certainly more than welcome to do so. All right, again, um, I just wanted to say, and, and thank you, ma'am. Sure. Um, I just want to say, legally right now, we could be open every night till 2 o'clock in the morning. Every night. With the wine and beer, we could be open every night till 2 o'clock in the morning. All right? We've never had an event till 1. 12 midnight is when that Thursday shut down. 12 midnight. We, we've, we're being considerate. And, and then again, like we're in front of commissioners right now, right? And we got 20-year residents, 40-year residents. We've been there um, almost two years now, as far as operating, almost two years. I would have liked to see the neighbors come, because I don't know what doors to knock on. I don't, I don't know what, do, but we're open, we have hours. I would like to see the neighbors come in, talk to us, let us know what you're thinking, not, not here at the, the city. You know, just, I mean, we're not, we're not mean, we're not misunderstanding people, we're not crazy people or anything like that. Just come in and talk to us. We've been to the Civic League meeting. We, they're not at the Civic League meeting. Y'all have, a, they have a different league. I don't, I don't know what it is. It's a condo league or something over there. But we've been to the Civic League meeting. We've been to the business uh, committee meeting, you know, for the city. Um, I just didn't see any of them at these meetings. So they have a condo association meeting. I don't live in that condo, so I didn't know they had a meeting. But like I said, if we have no problem sitting down, it's a, it's, it's a coffee shop. It's a, you can add some Kahlua to your coffee. You, we can sit down, we can actually talk with no issues and, and hash this out. But the questioning of the ABC license, which is valid, um, all this stuff like that, I, I just think it's uncalled for. We, we definitely can sit down as neighbors and, and talk it out. We definitely can. I, we have no problem. Me and my wife don't have any issues with that. Um, if it's loud music past 12 or anything like that, we can definitely talk about that. We can, we can definitely talk about it. We're approachable. I'm outside all the time sweeping off the front sidewalk, picking up cigarette butts, bottles, stuff that doesn't even have to do with us. Um, I guarantee you we add to the community. We're not taking away. I, I just want to finish with that. That's it. Thank you, sir. Madam Secretary, you closed the public here. Oh. Commissioner Jiggets. Yes, I just want to be clear on one thing. Um, if you would come back to the podium for just one moment. Thank you. There was a comment about you're not having a kitchen. Mm -hmm. But you do serve food. So how do you serve the food? So, uh, so. Uh, I'm sorry, ma'am. But according to ABC, you have to have facilities for hand washing, dish washing. Um, you have to have adequate refrigeration and freezer storage, be able to store so much food on site, mm -hmm. and be able to prepare hot meals. Um, on the, the front of the building, you see that we just put uh, the uh, blue, I don't know if you can go back to the previous photo where it shows the blue stuff. All right, it, those sandwiches are hot. Those are all grilled panini sandwiches. That, that's the hot food that we serve. All right, ABC knows this. We had to submit a menu to them. Um, so um, that being said, food is being prepared. Um, we get all of our cold cuts and stuff from Wegmans. Um, we're trying to bring something that you know people don't normally see. Uh, um, so that's, that's the hot food that we're serving. All right. Thank you so much. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. Commissioners, any additional comments? Or? Thank you. Madam Secretary, I believe that you closed the public hearing. Is that correct? That's correct. Commissioners, if there are no more additional questions, then we are in need of a motion. Madam Chair, I uh, made a motion earlier today, uh, earlier before the public hearing was closed, and I was out of order for that, so I do apologize. But I will make a similar motion in this regard that I believe um, that there may be potential common ground between community and business owner. 
and in the interest of that, I would like for us to defer this for 30 days, A, to potentially allow for that, but B, also to answer, you know, a handful of the questions that have been presented to staff in a staff report for us to take up at our next regular scheduled meeting. Thank you, Commissioner Hines. So you're making a, would anybody like to make a second? Thank you, commissioners. The motion has failed. Madam Secretary. Can make somebody can make another motion. I, commissioners, I need someone else to make another motion. I'm that making, motion failed, sorry. I make a motion that the Planning Commission vote to issue the use permit. No, she needs to make it to approve it or deny it. Commissioner Jiggets, we need for you to make the motion to approve or deny. I make the motion to approve the applicant for the use permit. I just need a second. Is it UP? Was it UP? It's UP-23-09. UP-2309. Yes, ma'am. Just, just so I'm clear, the motion is <clears throat> to approve UP-23-09, and we need a second. Second. Curry. Is that with conditions? With conditions. Thank you. With conditions. Okay. We have a motion and a second to approve with conditions, and we, you will be voting electronically. Yeah. Commissioner Hines. Um, I thank everybody for the healthy dialogue, and I uh, just wanted to give a rationale to this gentleman who has answered every question that I've thrown at him. Um, I support your business. I hope it all turns out. Um, I will not be supporting this use uh, permit. Um, I was hoping that we would a, have opportunity for our you know, community and business to, to go uh, forward in a positive manner. Um, however, I'm also a big believer in the uh, ways and means of things that should happen. And there's definitely been a fall down on behalf of the applicant according to zoning. So nothing personal, but I just wanted to make sure I wanted to thank you for answering all those questions and I wish your business well. Thank you, Commissioner Hines. Commissioners, we have a first and a second. Madam Secretary. You will be voting electronically. This item is approved by a vote of four to two. With, uh, yeah, with conditions. Okay. <laughs> all right. Our next item, just give it a moment while to clear the chamber. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. So now we got it. Okay. Oh, it's got it. Okay. Our next item is UP-23-12 downtown Tawana Fratter with Gentle Touch Learning Center, LLC, request a use permit to operate a child daycare on the approximately 1.75 acres located at 670 Lincoln Street in the downtown special district, SD, zoning district. The future land use map of the Build One Portsmouth comprehensive plan designates this property for mixed use employment. The property is owned by the Runner Mead Corporation and is further described as Tax Map 33, Parcel 79. The staff coordinator is Amy Mervine. This application is going to be deferred until our July the 18th Planning Commission public hearing. Because we have advertised this case, if there is anyone here who would like to address this application, you may come forward at this time state your name and your address for the record and you have five minutes to speak. 
Come on. Appearing to be none. Make sure. Appearing to be none. We will not close the public hearing and the, we will have this case on the July the 18th public hearing for the Planning Commission. Thank you, Madam Secretary. <laughs> Commissioners, we are in need of a motion and a second to defer. Madam Commissioner Chair. Hines. Madam Chair, I uh, move that we defer uh, UP-23-12 to our next scheduled meeting on July the 18th. Thank you. Second. second. Thank you, Commissioner Curry. Madam Secretary. Th thank you. We have a, a, a motion to enter second to defer this until the July the 18th, 2023 Planning Commission, and you will be voting electronically. This item is deferred by a vote of six to zero. Our next item, Z-23-04, downtown. Don Scott Esquire, on behalf of Safe Stowe Real Estate Company, LLC, requests to rezone approximately 5.38 acres at zero Effingham Street from downtown D1 T5 subdistrict to conditional general mixed use GMU K in order to develop a self service storage facility. The applicant is concurrently requesting a use permit for the self service storage facility use UP 2311. The future land use map of the Build One Portsmouth comprehensive plan designates this property for mixed use employment. The property is owned by the Portsmouth Redevelopment and Housing Authority, PRHA, and is further described as tax map 29, parcel nine. The staff coordinator is Julie Chop. The representative applicant is at the podium and you have 10 minutes, sir. Hopefully I won't need 10 minutes. Uh, good, good, good. <laughs> Thank you. Good, good, good afternoon, uh, commissioners, uh, staff. Um, this, uh, we've come to you before on this. Uh, it was approved before by the Planning Commission unanimously. Um, much has not changed. There are some conditions that the staff put on, landscaping, removing a fence, some other things that we have agreed to do. As you know, this is the old Washington Park. A site that was a shut down public housing project that was shut down for lead. Uh, that site uh, was uh, demolished and it was shut down in the 80s. It was demolished in 06. So it's been off the books for about 40 years in the city of Portsmouth. Um, basically just being vacant, abandoned, and eyesore for all intents and purposes uh, on Effingham. We have the support of the Civic League there. We have met with them. We've presented to them our plan. They supported it unanimously, wholeheartedly. We have uh, gone to uh, our partners, um, the Portsmouth Redevelopment Housing Authority, Mr. Bland, the director is here. They support the project for n number one, because we're paying for it. So uh, <laughs> we're gonna provide some, some much re needed uh, revenue to the housing authority. Um, and we're also gonna provide much needed revenue and job creation in the city of Portsmouth, at least temporarily while we build it. This is gonna be a $3 million uh, plus investment to put this site up and to get this thing done. Uh, as you all know, it was a site that was an EPA condemned site. It was capped and uh, it has been capped to that since that time. I think in your package there is a letter from EPA mm -hmm. stating what the uses are, what the permissible uses are. And one of the permissible uses is for something like this. It has a very low impact with in and out ing ingress and egress for folks to come in, take care of their storage and, 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 uh, and, and, and leave. So we're talking about um, a huge um, opportunity for the city to take something that has been uh, costing the city money to now be something that is producing revenue for the city while also maintaining uh, the reason that it was capped in the first place, continue to be a safe uh, product, safe environment for our citizens. So uh, with that, we are here to answer any questions. I, if you do have any questions, I went to law school because I was told there would be no math. There's an engineer in the back. Uh, Mr. Burt, who is with Safe Store, who can answer any questions, uh, did any technical questions that you might have. And I would um, yield the rest of my time. Thank you, Mr. Scott. 
Commissioner Jiggets? Yes, I do have one question. Will the the front of the building where you can turn in, will that be off of Effingham or will that be off of another location on sort of the back? Do you recall? Come on up. I just don't recall. Your name, sir? My name is Jim Burt. Thank you. B-U-R-T-T. Um, the site plan was up just a second ago, and I can explain. Okay, perfect. Um, that is essentially what we're going to be putting in. Uh, the main entrance would be off of Effingham. There is an ancillary entrance on the rear of the property, mainly for um, to be able to uh, have fire trucks go through. Um, otherwise, there would have to be some sort of hammerhead or something like that, a turnaround for a fire truck. And we're trying to disturb as little prop, uh, property as we can. Um, it, it is, um, there, this piece of property has multiple issues with it. Um, one of which is the EPA letter that you have um, in front of you. It also has high water table. Um, we're in a floodplain. We're having to build it up seven feet up in the air. Um, and I'm uh, sorry, I hate to stop you. Sure. Uh, I'm, I'm over here. Here I am, right here. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so my question is, is there going to be a main entrance going into the site from Effingham Street? In other yes, words, it would, you'd be able to turn into it from Effingham Street. Is that going to be the main entrance? Yes, ma'am. That will be the main entrance. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Commissioners, are there any additional questions? Commissioner Hines. I, actually, I do have a question. You're you're going to cover it before Ms. Jiggets had uh, about the flood um, plan. I think I think there was something in the packet that said he had to go as, as high as three, but I just heard another number come out as well. Is, is that a it going all the way to seven? Is that the plan? Like to get out of the flood. Uh, are you asking how high it has to yes. be? Yes, yeah. uh, I believe the requirement is that you're supposed to be at least one to two feet higher than base flood elevation um, for like 100 year. And seven foot is what gets us to that point. So we're, we have an, um, a very large portion, I mean, a lot of dirt coming in here. Right, and, and the, the, you're right about the site having a, a lot of problems or yes. challenges. Yes, it does. Uh, easements running basically right through the property. Uh, yeah. There's there's a number of uh, things that you've had to design around to to make this uh, a, a, a potential project. I think so. Um, I, I support it because again, I don't think there's an awful lot that can be done given the site challenges that you're going to be having. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioners, any additional questions for the applicant? Thank you, Mr. Scott. Thank you, Mr. Burke. Thank you. Madam Secretary. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Commissioner Jiggets. Yes, just for full disclosure, I do want to say that I did serve on the Portsmouth Redevelopment and Housing Authority Board before I started my uh, commission here on the uh, Planning Commission. And being a member of the PRHA board, that was our property that was under contract. And so I just wanted to give full disclosure. Um, I was part of the uh, commissioners who voted to sell the property. And although I may not have to give full disclosure, I think you all know me well enough by now to know I believe in full disclosure. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Chickets. Madam, Madam Secretary. Thank, thank you, Madam Chairman. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, this is a public hearing on item Z-23-04. If there's someone here who did not register and would like to address this application, you may come forward, state your name and your address. You will be given up to five minutes to speak. Good afternoon, Madam Chair. Commissioners and other neighbors. 
I'm Mark Gedulda Gietrowski. You can reach me at Post Office Box 50141, Portsmouth 23703. Um, I am going to encourage you to do as your predecessors have done and decide this correctly for the third time. <laughs> they didn't do it for the third time, but maintaining that record I think stands you in good stead. I wish that council had done it right, if not on the first try, the second try, but they're the ones who've made it necessary for you all to hear it once again. As the attorney for, for the applicant stated, the Environmental Protection Agency, which is responsible for ensuring that what we do occurs in a responsible way, uh, has given its seal of approval to this project. Um, as Commissioner Hines has said and the applicant's attorney has said, this property has a number of challenges that have kept it inert, essentially, for four decades. And yet, the city of Portsmouth struggles because so much of our land is not taxable. So this seems like a good solution to a persistent problem. And I should say I thank the applicant for persisting in the face of, of less than an open-armed welcome to do this project. I, I should add about myself that I have been involved in a number of environmental causes for at least three decades. Um, and so I am particularly sensitive to issues dealing with the well-being of the environment and the people who inhabit it. And I am satisfied in my heart that this is an environmentally responsible approach to a problem that is also a financial problem for the city of Portsmouth. So with that said, I encourage you to do the right thing as I see it and vote as your predecessors have to make this happen. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a public hearing on item Z-23-04. There's anyone else here who would like <coughs> to address, you may come forward. State your name and your address. You have up to five minutes to speak. Good afternoon, commissioners. Um, I'm the executive director for the Portsmouth Redevelopment Housing Authority. My name is Edward Bland. I'm here to support um, the project. I think it would be best use for the city. It's been not, it's been not used really for almost 40 years, you might say. And this would be an opportunity to go ahead and get the best use for it and, and also provide additional storage for the folks who are transitioning in and out of, of Portsmouth. So I'm here to support it on, on behalf of the uh, Portsmouth Redevelopment Housing Authority. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else here who would like to address this application? appearing to be none, Madam Chairman, members of the Planning Commission, this public hearing is now closed. I need a motion. Commissioners, we are in need of a motion and a second. I make a move to approve the Z-23-04. I believe, does that have conditions with that? Does not have a condition, does it? Mm -hmm. No. Not in the rezone. No, the no. proffers. Mm -mm. No. Okay. Not in this one. Thank you. I make mm -hmm. a motion to approve Z-20-04. I'll 
I'll second that. Thank you. Madam Secretary. We have a motion then to second to approve Z-23-04 and you will be voting electronically. This item is approved six to zero. Our next item, UP-2311 Downtown Don Scott Esquire on behalf of Safe Stowe Real Estate Company LLC requests a use permit for a three-story 103,350 square foot self-storage facility with 793 units on the approximately 5.38 acre property at 0 Effingham Street. The property is currently zoned downtown D1 in the T5 sub-district. The applicant is concurrently requesting a rezoning of the property in to conditional general mixed use GMUK zoning district Z-23-04. The future land use map of the Build One Portsmouth comprehensive plan designates this property for mixed use employment. The property is owned by the Portsmouth Redevelopment and Housing Authority, PRHA, and is further described as tax map 29, parcel nine. The staff coordinator is Julie Chop, and the applicant is already at the po podium to present his case. Thank you. Good to see you again, Madam Chair. Good to be seen. After so long a time and commissioners. <laughs> but I want to just, uh, is, is there's no new information uh, to present. You kind of heard the full gist of this already. Again, it's three story, 103,000 square foot storage facility, 793 units. Nothing's changed except we just need you to uh, pr um, approve this uh, change so that we can get this thing, start breaking ground and move it forward, bring it to city council and hopefully uh, we'll have some success this time. Thank you. Thank you. Is, uh, this is a public hearing for item UP-23-11. If there's anyone here who did not get an opportunity to register and would like to address this application, you may come forward, state your name and your address for the record. You will be given up to five minutes to speak. Appearing to be none, Madam Chairman, members of the Planning Commission, this public hearing is now closed. Thank you, Madam Secretary. Yes, if commissioners, are there any additional questions? No. <coughs> then we are in need of a motion and a second with conditions. Mm -hmm. Madam Chair, I make a, a motion to approve UP-23-11 with conditions. I'll second that. Thank you. We have a motion and a second to approve UP-23-11 with conditions and you will be voting electronically. This item is approved by a vote of six to zero with conditions. Thank you, Madam Secretary. Mm -hmm. I believe that concludes our agenda for today, is that correct? That is correct. Commissioners, is there any further business? Ms. Adamois, any further business? Thank you for your service. Thank you, we appreciate everything the staff does. With that said, hearing is adjourned. <laughs>